What's going on people? Welcome to the road trip. Welcome to the Carabao Cup final road trip. It's Wembley day. Q Sarah Sarah. United are on their way to Wembley and this is it. The time is now. The nerves have set in but the confidence is also set in. The excitement set in. The butterflies have set in. On the way to Wembley. I'm going through all the emotions. I believe in this team. I think we're going to do it but it's just a massive day. It's a massive day for Eric Ten Hag. It's a massive day for these players. And it's a massive moment in Eric Ten Hag's early tenure. Don't get me wrong. Look, at the end of the day, it, this doesn't define whether Eric Ten Hag is successful or not. It's a cup final, you can win or lose. However, I'm not entertaining any of that talk right now. That's a debrief, that's, that's, that's negative thinking. I'm on straight positivity. These is, this is where it matters. Ten Hag even said it last week. I don't give a crap about credit. It's about winning titles, it's about winning trophies. And essentially, nobody's gonna care that we got to a cup final and didn't win. We did that with Oli, we didn't win. Um, you know, we've got to other cup finals before and not won, you know? So it, today's all about winning. Get the W, get the trophy. And for these players, it will propel them. I'm sure of it, it's gonna propel them onto bigger things. It's so big for these players because all of the hard work we've been doing, the vision that Eric Ten Hag has bought, you know, the ethos and the structure that he's bought, the culture that he's bought in such a short space of time, to win the first trophy available to him would be absolutely huge. And I believe in us, I really do. Team news, obviously, Marcus Rashford has traveled. He's gonna be absolutely vital. I'm pretty sure he's gonna start. I'll be surprised if he doesn't. You know, Rashford's been in such good form that even if he's picked up a little knock, it'll be a, it'll be a case of the fact that he's traveled. I'm assuming it's a case of he'll start and see how he goes, you know, see if there's anything wrong. You know, if he has to come off, he has to come off, but he, he must start, he must start. And for me, if, he's, if he is starting, I think he has to start up front for me. I would go Jaden Sancho on the left. Now that Anthony's back, he has to start on the right-hand side, put Bruno back in the 10 and get, um, and, uh, and, and get Marcus Rashford up front. I think he goes with Fred and Casemiro. Again, I think Fred's been playing out of his skin. People can nitpick in his game and we all say Fred is like a box of chocolates, but recently he's been a big game player and he's been a player that Ten Hag trusts. And in the big moments when you need high energy, high intensity, I trust Fred. I trust Fred. We know what we can get with Fred. Yeah, there might be a 20 minute spell where he might not play very well, but he's proved and he's earned his right to start this game for me with Sabitzer to come in and up the levels when we need it. Casemiro, Varane, Martinez, these types of players. Like, this is this is why we have these players. Luke Shaw was talking about we've got players in the team who have played in big games before. You know, Luke Shaw's played in in, in, in European finals and semi-finals and stuff like that, in big games. He's all, you know, you look at Varane, don't even need to talk about what he's won. Look at Casemiro. You know, even Bruno is a big game player. David De Gea, big game experiences big game players. We've got players over the part now. Even Rashford, you know, he's won stuff at Manchester United. Won the EFL Cup, he's won the FA Cup, he's won the Europa League. He knows what it means to win trophies at Man United. Not the trophies that we want, of course, not the big ones, but he knows pressure moments. And, you know, that's what we need to, that's what we need to latch onto today. I just think it's gonna be a tight game. If you look at Newcastle as well, look, they want this bad. You know, we're the favorites. Manchester United are favorites. I don't think we should shy away from that. That makes me feel nervous, but at the same time, it makes me feel excited. And it also shows, you know, how far we've come. But usually, and this is no disrespect to Newcastle, Man United should be favourites to win a cup final against Newcastle. But this is a Newcastle team that is difficult to beat. They don't concede many goals. They don't, they've got the best defensive record in the league or one of the, I don't know if it still actually is, you know, number for number, goal for goal, but they're up there pound for pound. Yes, they don't have Nick Pope. That's gonna be a big miss for them. So we need to put Karius under serious pressure. I want to see shots from distance. I want to see corners dropped in on top of him. The guy hasn't played in two years. He has not played in two years. And we need to make sure that he doesn't turn into a, into a prime Manuel Neuer or some shit like that. Because at the end of the day, that is going to be their Achilles heel. You know, they, they've got a goalkeeper there who literally has not played a competitive game in two years. And we need to seize upon that. Um, we need to be intense. I think Newcastle, like, like Eric Tenard said, they can be an annoying team. They're going to take the sting out of the game. I don't think, I don't see them putting it on us and running all, all around the pitch. I see them in the first 10, 15 minutes, um, just, you know, being, being, having their two blocks of four, being really solid, being, you know, good in the tackle, winning their duels or trying to make sure they win their duels, take the sting out of the game and play at their tempo and hit us on the counter. You know, this can be a transition game. If, if the likes of Alan St. Maximum starting, we have to control the transitions and we have to make sure that 
when we, you know, that we're on the front foot. Because if we're not on the front foot and we can see spaces on a counter attack and we're running back towards our own goal with big gaps and big spaces, then we're in trouble. Then you're talking about who should start, Diogo Dalo or Wan Bissaka. I don't know. I said in my in my um, in my preview, I, I got I just got a feeling. I think it'll be Diogo Dalo. I don't know. What do you guys think? I got a feeling it'll be Diogo Dalo today. Um, that's not definite. It's just a feeling that I've got. I just think Eric Ten Hag might freshen it up there. You know, uh, in the two big games, I think against Barcelona, Aaron Wan Bissaka done really well. No problems there. However. Um, there was a moment in that Barca game when we just needed to up the quality, we need to be a bit better on the ball, go up that little bit of uh, technical ability, um, and he brought him in. But having said that, if Juan Bissaka is starting and you've got Alan St. Maximum there, which I don't know if he is definitely going to start, it could be Willick on that left-hand side, we don't know yet. But if you do have Alan St. Maximum playing, who do you want up against him one-on-one? -on -one? You definitely want Aaron Juan Bissaka. So, I'm, I'm, again, whatever, the, whatever Ten Hag goes with, I'm happy with, I think. We got to trust in his team selection, and we also have to trust that he can change the game. How important is Alejandro Ganacho going to be today? Jaden Sancho, I thought that that Barcelona game just gone was probably a, a game just too big for him in terms of intensity. Um, you know, he's, he's early in his comeback; he's only just coming back into form. He's only just coming back into the side and trying to rebuild his kickstart his season again. And I think when the levels went up and the intensity went up, he just he just struggled a little bit. Struggled on the ball, you know. Um, I think if he does go, I think he will go with Sancho again and give him a chance to, to play in this big game, you know, experience, etc. I think he'll keep Ganacho back. But what we have seen about Ganacho is that he's ready to come off the bench and make a difference. You know, if you're Kieran Trips, Kieran Trippier, you ain't going to want to see, uh, you ain't going to want to have gone up against Sancho um, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're going up against um, Alejandro Ganacho. Or, or, let's face it, if Ten Hag keeps it the same, I've, that's just my thing about putting Rashford through the middle, Ten Hag might go, you know what? I'm going to play Bedcourt as a focal point. I personally wouldn't. I think if Bruno, I think if Anthony's back ready to start, I think we go back to Rashford up front, Bruno in the 10 and Jaden Sancho on the left. But I wouldn't rule it out. I can easily see Ten Hag still going with that focal point up front in Bedcourt in terms of working hard, disrupting Newcastle. If you're talking about two big centre halves, I know he doesn't win a lot of headers, um, but you know he'd want to win duels and just be a bastard in there. But for me, I think if it, it's going to be Botman and Shah, isn't it? I think they're going to be the same way how Arroyo and Christensen were really comfortable with the fact that Vekors was there in the first half. There was just no threat in behind and it just changed in the second half. When you put Anthony up there, when you put Rashford up there um, and then Ganacho came in late, you just got that threat across the whole front three and I think we need that against Newcastle. Dan Byrne needs to know he's in for a game against Anthony. Don't get me wrong, we want Anthony to do more, we want him to you know, start crossing the ball more and using his other foot etc etc but he's a live wire. If you're, if you're Shah, and if you're um, Botman, I need Rashford running in behind. Just the presence of them thinking, shit, we need to be careful here. Um, and like I said, if you're Kieran Trippier, okay, the trickery of Jaden Sancho is one thing, but also if he's going up against Rashford or Ganacho, he's engaged. We need all of the back four to be engaged um, for Newcastle with Bruno finding them as well. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out Vekos at the same time. Um, I still think it's possible he could start and I wouldn't be mad, but me personally, I think we need to go for it. This is the cup final. I think quite a couple of times we've seen it not quite work with records and then we have to make the change. We got to start properly today. We got to start properly. Too many games. Look at the first half against Barcelona. The first 10, min 10 minutes was fine up until the penalty or 15 minutes was fine up until the penalty. We created a big chance after like two minutes. We were on them, pressing them. That's how we're going to have to be against Newcastle whenever they do have the ball. Because um, I think they will sit back and let us have it. And then, uh, like I said, feel their way into, their way into the game. Um, but we have to be on it. We've got to move the ball quickly. We've got to be intense in what we do. We've got to win our battles as well. Put in tackles in the first five, 10 minutes. Let Newcastle know we're not just there to look pretty because we're Man United and we've got nice players. We come to give them a game. We ain't knackered from three days ago against Barcelona. If anything, we're more up for it. Do you know what I mean? So I believe in these players, man. I'm going for, I, I do think the game's going to be tight. I'm going to go, I'm going to go for a tight, incredibly tight 2-1 win. Um, I would love to be leaving Wembley, you know, with, with, with it being much easier than that and keeping a clean sheet, etc. But I just, this is a big occasion and I just, I don't know. I just, I, I'm giving Newcastle a little bit of respect in terms of they are difficult to beat. You know, they, in the big games, they, they do turn up, but they haven't been good as late. And if we get the first goal against them, I think we pick them apart. I think that is so important. Going 1-0 down, you still keep the faith. We've been doing that. We've gone 1-0 down. We've conceded big goals. And we've always bounced back, I believe, in Eric Ten Hag. But this is a cup final, man. Momentum is key and we have to get that first goal. But I believe the time is now. 
I believe that we're going to win this trophy today. I don't care about Jinx and Judge and Flex. Don't say that. F that. This is a cup final. We got one of the best managers in the world. We're going in the right direction. And this is the stepping stone. This is the stepping stone that we need right now. And I think we're ready to take that step. Look at the belief thrown through the team. I just, I just can't see us getting beat. I really can't. So as long as we apply ourselves, as long as we do the things that we're supposed to do and play to our level, I'm fully confident. But it is not going to be an easy game. Newcastle will be ready to pounce on any mistakes. They'll be ready to pounce on any sort of bad performance that we put in or give them a little bit of a chance to, to get into the game. They will be ready. And I, but I just back us to make sure that doesn't happen. 2-1 win Manchester United. Keep everybody company on the match view. Make sure you log on to it. Get involved. Get your predictions in. Get the feeling going. Get on social media if you can't make the game. I know you guys are watching from all around the world and this means so much to us as Man United fans. Don't let Ed, listen, the rival is out there today. Don't, don't get it twisted. Every single rival fan is a Newcastle fan today, apart from Sunderland fans. Everybody is against Man United. But you know what? That's just how we like it. Hated, adored, never ignored. And this is the, this is a chance to show people, whether, whether they say, ah, oh, it's only a Carabao Cup, mate. Man United acting like they won the Champions League. Man United acting like they won the league. Man United acting like they just won the treble. We don't give a crap what rivals say. We know what our team is on and our team is on smoke. And if we win today, I tell you what, everyone is, is looking at us saying, Man United are on their way back. They're pretty much there. So let's go and show the world. Let's go and do it. Come on. <laughs>